Hello, everybody. Um, I wanted to talk about, uh, you know, I, I've been studying a lot of what's been going on on Earth, and I wanted to specifically look at the wildlife, um, but I wanted to think about how that is connected uh, to the universe um, in specific. So uh, one thing that's interesting to think about um, is that uh, we're looking at a picture here of the Milky Way, right? Um, and uh, we're located in this. Um, this is an uh, image of it. And, um, uh, you know, when I first started thinking about things, um, you know, there's definitely uh, a lot to understand here. So, um, so I wanted to kind of ask you a question. Um, like, how would you go about understanding this? Um, and I've been thinking about this uh question of life um here on earth uh, and how that's connected to the universe um so uh this is a very debatable topic um it's definitely one that you personally can uh, study and understand uh, differently so do not uh take my ideas and be like oh yeah this is for sure because there are many ways to think about how life might work universally so uh, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about uh, some things that I've been thinking about so we're gonna go through a bunch of topics I'm gonna storm through this go through this really quickly here and um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about axial tilt um, of all the planets um, because we're gonna be looking at the equator primarily uh, and we're going to be studying uh, life on Earth here on the equator, but how that may be related to other areas. This is a diagram showing the entire Milky Way and our position in that Milky Way. Um, and I wanted to emphasize that the understanding of our solar system is not simple. So you may have seen diagrams before of like this is the planet Mars and this is Earth and all that, but there's actually a lot going on, a lot of... Uh, other asteroids, rocks, and even the small planets uh, within the asteroid belts. So something to think about. Um, there are many ways to perceive the universe. Uh, here's a radio spectrum image, another radio spectrum, atomic hydrogen image, uh, infrared, near infrared, optical, x-ray, and it goes on and on. So uh, basically the way that we're gonna talk about this, understanding life on Earth, there are many ways to perceive that. Here are the specific numbers for axial tilt. Now, again, we're going to be looking at Oceania, um, basically Southeast Asia, Indonesia, Philippines, and also the Caribbean. So the axis is very important, um, how that is connected to other places uh, around the universe. So, wow. So we're also going to look at essentially the uh the the tilt of the earth really matters right so this axial tilt that we're talking about it's 23 and a half degrees and that determines this as you spin around the sun because the earth doesn't spin perfectly center it matters the seasons uh it, it affects uh you can see the tropic of cancer tropic of capricorn um, and as the earth spins uh, it might be on one side of this axis or the other depending so and then there's also the moon spinning around the earth we're going to try to talk about that as well so and then this is the magnetosphere but it's not the whole story so basically again we're talking about the equator but the thing that i wanted to emphasize is that there is many ways to understand the way we understand how the earth works so initially you know i was thinking about the north pole and the south pole and i realized that the south pole looks antarctica kind of looks like a brain um don't have an image of that right now but we're hopefully i'll get you one in a second it looks like the cross section of a brain and even if it melts there's an interesting question there as well so we're going to look at this question of the magnetosphere but that really if you notice on the magnetosphere side it really shows that the invisible fields that we don't see primarily happen on the north and the south pole that's because the earth is basically a me anything that moves in the universe has electromagnetic spectrum and then therefore it affects uh it, it basically creates a field around earth it's a protective field uh it's very vital so uh oops let me go back to this here so 
also there's something not only this is the solar system here but there's also something called the heliosphere so basically that's created by the sun itself so not only does the earth have a field around it but the entire solar system has a different field around it so that's very important to think about too and we have voyager 1 and voyager 2 both outside of the heliosphere so that's basically saying they're almost outside of what you would call our solar system so that's interesting to think about so again you have this protecting the earth and the sun right because we're spinning and there's invisible things that we cannot see so again try to keep uh, uh, <laughs> somewhat logical here we want to talk about some spiritual things definitely however uh, we need to just get to the surface of the logical stuff as well um, so basically what I'm trying to say here is that the uh, it's not just the poles. So most astrophysicists would start to look at the magnetosphere and the heliosphere because that's potentially the way that a planet could communicate with another planet. However, most of the activity, if we go back to the image of the Milky Way, notice it's all along the equator here. So that's a very important key to life around the entire universe and around galaxies and everything. So the equators actually are super important because that's probably where the life is on every planet, right? Around not only our solar system, but the entire universe, galaxies, whatever you want to talk about. So, um, but the other thing I want to emphasize is again, don't go crazy about this discussion saying everything is about uh, the equator because planets, like I was mentioning here in this diagram, they spin at all their, so we're actually spinning around at a very good plane but the, each planet actually has a slightly different rotation, even though we're all on the same plane. So, <clears throat> and there's a big discussion on that. So, <clears throat> again, <clears throat> here's another example <clears throat> of how that works. This is specific example, specific details of what they're called within that magnetosphere. So you may want to think about that. But what I wanted to emphasize here is that we're basically on. A very important concept because it's not just the equator it's actually the poles that matter too because we're actually trying to find a link between how life along the equators may work with the poles and so that's really what we're going to look at when we look at some more details here uh, in the maps in a moment so <clears throat> I hope I'm getting my point across of how complicated this is um, so it's not just our planet, it's the moon. Here's a picture of the moon. Now you can see this is actually the south pole of the moon. We're thinking of colonizing the moon and that's gonna be happening fairly soon. And they're actually gonna put it on the pole, not on the equator, which is really mysterious, right? Because most life actually is near the equator, even though they're not, they're just looking at that as, an, as it's probably gonna happen on the south pole. But anyway, so something to think rethink about in terms of things so i'm sorry if i'm uh doing things so here's a geological map so i wanted to emphasize also that although we're going to be looking at the equator primarily meaning indonesia philippines and also the caribbean uh, papua new guinea and so on um there is a lot of geology too because remember if there is a way for the earth to communicate with the rest of the universe it's probably not just life there's probably geological things that we need to look at so it's important to think about the geological map we're not going to get into that super detail but you may want to look at this page on magnetosphere it gives you some details so let's look at what's going on here so what i wanted to do before we're going to get into a lot of things and i'm probably just going to close up this discussion but here's a picture of the if you notice carefully, let me see if I can get another image. Sorry about this. So this is actually forms a triangle, um, and I'm going to turn off the climate classification. So notice there's a very interesting triangle here. You might say whatever, it's a triangle, you know, whatever. But 
every detail of what we're studying matters. There's no detail that doesn't matter in studying the Earth. This is our only planet that we have. We're not, it's going to take thousands and thousands of years to get anywhere in any other solar system, and there's no guarantee that there's going to be a planet like Earth in the next solar system. So this is pretty much everything. So we really need to know what we're doing. And actually, people that claim to know what they're doing, you have to be very cautious because uh, there's a lot of spiritual questions too because we're talking about life uh, and we're talking about Earth and some crazy astrophysics that uh, is really out of bounds, right? So let's go back to this other image really quick. So again, this is a triangle. We're going to get into some funny details in a second here. Now, you can see there's kind of a swirling shape here, and there's also a thing here. This is the Caribbean, right? Um, so we're going to look at that and careful. Now, I wanted to emphasize that there is a, because we're talking about wildlife, um, and we're also talking about some astrophysics, but the mountain ranges are interesting because, again, we're talking about the geology is important in terms of the astrophysics, and this actually goes way out here, too. So what I wanted to say here is that, man, life has basically been kicked out of the flat areas and it's all people in most of these flat areas and the and the, the wildlife has moved up into the mountains and that's pretty much where the wildlife is the entire island of java is populated there's it's like 31 million people just in that small little area of jakarta that's where my mom was born actually so and there's some very mysterious stories here that I want to get into. Um, my great, great, great grandfather sailed a sailboat and mysteriously witnessed Krakatoa exploding when he was just sailing past this part. Now, if you know anything about this area, this area has a lot of. Can you imagine if the moon is, the moon is affecting Earth? There's tides that come through here that are unbelievably strong through that little point because remember the water cannot escape and that can only escape to that little point right there anyway so there's some mysterious stuff going on here in this discussion and i would say that if you personally want like how could it possibly be that he would sail past this during a volcano that's unbelievable right explosion so uh and uh what I would say is that if you're going to get into studying some of this, like the spiritual side of things is very, very important. And basically, uh, some of the areas here are like completely illegal to even travel to. Uh, there's like indigenous people that have never seen. I saw a video earlier of some indigenous people and they like they, they went to the island and the people like almost got attacked uh, by uh, the, the, the they tried to visit the island. And it was just, they weren't, obviously, they're not wearing any clothes. They're wearing, like, grass. Uh, and they're just, like, you know, have all these sticks and knives or whatever and just, like, approach them. And it was it was pretty crazy a video. So, uh, basically, what I'm going to say is there's definitely other maps to look at. Now, this is where I wanted to look at carefully to help you understand. This is a pole of Saturn. Notice this, there's actually a perfect shape of a hexagon here. One, two, three, four, five, six sides. How possible is it that there's a shape of a hexagon on the pole of a planet? So we have a triangle. So what I'm trying to emphasize here as we discuss this, now here's other images of Saturn, but let's look at the details. So you can see here's Saturn's hexagon uh, in detail. Here's another image. So inside of that is this guy right here. That's the spiral right there. That looks like this. But again, you can see there's quite, now here, uh, Anyway, I'm sorry I don't have enough images of this. There's duplicate copy here. Um, but you can see this hexagon here shows up, and there's kind of a swirly part there. Uh, and it's kind of spinning here, and you can kind of see this swirling part, and this is hurricanes. Saturn is much bigger than, than uh, Earth. Uh, we cannot live on the surface of Saturn, probably, because the uh, pull of the gravity is so strong, as well as it's, it's a liquid uh, or gas uh, surface. So... Uh, we're not going there either, uh, you know, uh, probably Mars is the best chance, but even that is going to be extremely difficult, so probably the moon is close, but even that takes about uh, almost uh, a week or more to get to the moon, um, so it's quite a journey uh, to be, anyway, so, okay, so here is Jupiter, and this is the pole of Jupiter, so again, let me take you back to this. Uh, again, we're talking about this weird-shaped triangle. 
why am I talking about the polls? Because we're trying to come up, I'm trying to ask you for help uh, in understanding how the equator might be linked to the North Pole and the South Pole. Because once we understand that, we can start to understand how the Earth potentially communicates with other planets around the solar system and the galaxy and the universe. Now, the reason I say universe confidently is because our galaxy may have common, uh, there may be common things, like we've all been spinning around the galaxy for billions of years, uh, and actually if you're spinning around just like everything else is spinning around, there may be patterns within the same planets, suns, and everything. So our galaxy may have commonality between all the planets, uh, all the stars, uh, and things, uh, so there's ways to uh, link uh, different things in, in, the, in the... Okay, so here here is another image of Saturn's pole, and you can vaguely see this, this kind of six-sided shape. Um, now, I, again, I wanted to go back to the Milky Way, because remember, we're talking about the Milky Way here, and basically we have a flat disk, but there's weird things going on within that Milky Way. Um, and you can have, this is a great image because it's got labels if you want to look up specific parts of the Milky Way. Because not everything is perfectly along the plane, <clears throat> right? Um, but a lot of this is along the plane. So again, uh, that's why we're looking at the equator. Um, so uh, the night sky, one thing I wanted you to think about, if you haven't looked at the stars before, um, this really surprised me when I first started looking at the stars. I was like, well, how am I going to find Jupiter or Mars or Saturn or, or uh, uh, you know, or anything out there? You know, and actually it's kind of funny because if everything goes along the... So if the moon is spinning around the Earth, remember the Earth, the Earth is spinning around the sun and all the other planets are spinning around, guess what happens? All the other planets spit, show up right around where the moon is. So if you can find the moon nearby you're going to see where the other planets are so actually the first astronomers in the history of earth it was fairly it wasn't entirely difficult to find the other planets because we we figured out that the other planets were on the same axis as the moon was so that's kind of interesting when you think about it um that the equator because they're basically rotating around the equator with the moon and everything else so the equator so again, what I'm trying to explain here is that the equator is very important, even though on the astrophysics side, uh, you know, we're basically talking, uh, let me go back to here, uh, sorry about this. Uh, so basically on the other side of this thing is we have the North Pole and the South Pole, and actually that's also extremely important. So don't go crazy on the equator stuff. And here you can again see that image So let's look at this uh, for a moment. Um, and I'm really sorry, let me get this image because it will take out the clouds. It's really nice to have the clouds there. So what are we trying to do, right? Um, so we noticed that the other planets uh, actually had a weird thing. Now on the South Pole, right, we can see that this kind of looks like a brain, like a cross section of a brain, which is really mysterious. Now we're starting to uncover things about our planet um, and I'm going to stop this video hopefully soon because I don't want to bore people. Uh, but uh, hopefully you can start to see some weird things. Now, this little guy right here actually points to the magnetic pole. So this little island here, there's a magnetic... So the actual center of the pole is here, but the magnetic field pole is right there. And it actually helps us. This island can tell us where that magnetic pole is. So that's a very interesting key. So right there, we know that... Other islands and things may actually point and help us understand certain interesting objects. We have this boot kicking this island here off and going on into outer space. So we got some really uh, interesting keys just based on this island. We know that guy's pointing to the South Pole. So what we know is that, yes, the center of this is probably going to be very complex. But let's just take for a moment that we got these other islands here, Sri Lanka, and some things. So I I want to be very cautious. I want to re-explain something to you, is that 
basically you know what you're doing right come up with a spiritual idea about what's really going on here uh, in this region now what I would say is let's go back to this image here now notice that this is kind of spinning around in a circle here what we're trying to do is understand essentially how this spinning around process this was created by the earth uh, and whole just billions of years on what's been going on right so what we what we need to understand is how what's going on here right and it's not just logical so one quick explanation that I want to explain to you is that I had this spiritual feeling around Lake Maracibo that so there's the, the world's most lightning collects right in this pocket here and these places are extremely dangerous to check out so uh, be careful <laughs> talking uh, about these things so, but basically what I'm trying to say is that I came up with the let's say this concept of like reincarnation lake so there is a light uh, each human uses up a tremendous amount of energy on earth uh, all the life forms and everything connected to what we're doing uh, is huge it's unbelievable like what's going on so remember we're talking about the wildlife here and you know the interesting thing about this is that there's a lot of sea creatures and there's also above uh, you know there's monkeys there's everything all kinds of you know the 1200 and nine animals per little speck of things here you know in the united states we have like maybe one or two couple animals per you know square kilometer um but uh you know it's basically this is the diversity here so what i'm trying to explain to you is that there's a spiritual key here that we really need to understand because there's life here on our planet and you know there's lightning and there's some other weird things going on here there's a lot of hurricanes that come through here i didn't even show the hurricane map uh, and things so basically we got the caribbean here and the uh excuse me and then uh, i call this other area oceana uh, but basically uh what what i'm trying to say is that i don't really want to tell you my, like i'm talking about the logical stuff here but there's a lot of spiritual stuff going on with the planet and and I kind of like to just write about it rather than talk about it on video because I'm kind of embarrassed to even talk on video about anything, to be honest. Uh, but there's a lot of... Uh, so what I wanted to emphasize is that I there is a lot of spiritual ideas here uh, about what's going on and, and things. Like, let me give you another example. There's a, a dream tourist organization in this area of Singapore. They take you on, so the, 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 the electromagnetic field is really weird in here because it's, uh, the declination field kind of is correct. And they also do this on the North Pole and the South Pole near the Aurora. And it's kind of like interesting, right? So there's a whole lot of other things going on because there's like, I mean, it's just, it's so different than, than uh, Europe and, uh, anyway, so, but the point is that uh, what I'm trying to make here is that this is connected to the solar system. The solar system is connected to other nearby areas in our galaxy. Uh, and let me try to get this diagram here. Sorry. So, like, we're right here, but we're on this arm, and there's and somehow we spiral into this thing here, and there's all these interconnected things, but. What we really want to do is understand how that's all interconnected, right? And it's not just the equator. It's, and to, to be honest, most of the, it's a debate, right? There's a lot of communication between the planets that are done on the North and the South Pole. So, but there's some key to life on the equator. So what we need to try to understand. Now you notice this shape kind of looks, and this is where I want to maybe end the conversation. That spinning process kind of looks like some of these things start to look like they're almost spinning around like the entire galaxy. You can see this guy here, Papua New Guinea, kind of has this kind of spinning here. And then there's kind of some spinning here. And then the right in here, now what this area is, what I want to look at, there's another kind of spinning process in here. So basically, I wanted to look carefully at that. And it's very complex. 
and what going on here, um, you know, both logically and spiritually. And I would say that most of the good, really fun ideas that I've had have been mostly spiritual concepts that I've thought about logically and also spiritually about what's going on here. So I don't want to pollute your ideas because you could come up with something way cooler and way more interesting about what's going on. So, and I certainly hope uh, to hear from you if you've got some good ideas. Now, and then lastly, I want to emphasize, man, uh, so we're, we're going to look at one more thing. So yeah, sorry about that. So lastly, what I want to emphasize is the farming and the wildlife. And basically, you know, so we're basically taking over all of Earth here. And where is the life for the rest of the rest of the planet plants and animals and everything and that's just wrong right so basically if you zoom in here you start to see the rivers and i'm sorry if this is going really slow hold on a second so yeah it's loading up uh but you can see there's some rivers in here and some other things it's trying to load very slowly um but, you know, essentially there was a lot of mountain range in here. These are the farmlands and the pe and I didn't even show the people map. So, you know, basically this is all starting to become lots of people here. And you can see there's not very populated in here and things. Now there's nothing, I mean, it's, it's, it, it could be nice to live next to all the animals, but uh, what I wanted to emphasize is that it takes a lot of farmland to feed people. And I, I don't know. I guess we got to be very cautious here because in the Philippines, you know, it's pretty much been, if I add, let me try to add the uh, population map here. Um, where is the population map? Uh, sorry about this. Uh, socioeconomic human population. Here we go. So if we add the population map on top of this, um, let's see, so you can start to see the population here. It, it's just really bad because it takes a lot of every spec a person here it takes you know uh, 12 football fields to feed that person so one spec here it means a whole lot of farmland so the philippines is a terrible example because it's pretty much very populated so and if you look at here in india it's pretty much all been taken over that's the people version there uh let me see if i can get Sorry, it's really slowing down my computer right now because I got so much going on. I'm really sorry about this. Um, but essentially, what I wanted to try to explain is that, man, uh, we got to figure this out. So, how we're connected to the um, everything here. So, there's just so much going on, and we need to make some good decisions, healthy decisions, and try to work together with the wildlife because. Uh, hold on a second. I'm sorry, I'm really struggling right now because. Uh, it's just really difficult for me spiritually thinking about this because there's just so many stresses right now, um, you know, around the world. So uh, I'm going to try to close out this conversation because, um, you know, I, I really wanted to emphasize the importance of like really caring about what we're doing here because this is like life here on Earth and there's like no backup plan. Like we're not. I mean, uh, yeah, we can go to the moon, we can go to Mars, but what we do here really matters a lot. So basically, uh, I, I wanted to really focus on on helping you and everybody else really think about what we can do to help out here, right? Because we're starting to like essentially, uh, you know, the fishing problems, like I, I think I discussed that before. There's so many fishing boats here. I can load up the fishing maps. It's it's just I don't know, you know. So it's important to work with the wildlife and really listen to the wildlife here and to think about what we're doing. So uh, anyway, so I, I hope it was an interesting discussion and let me know what you think. Thank you so much. Again, if you have any questions or you want to discuss things, I'd be happy to talk about it. I love talking about really important fun spiritual ideas too so you know yeah i mean there's a lot of things to think about logically about what we're doing here um, i want to close out this conversation as quickly as possible because i really want to get back to uh, focusing on doing some good things here so again this is our earth uh try to take a look at what's going on 
Um, and thank you so much. And I pray that uh, we can really understand what's happening here. Thank you so much.